Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. I say good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. The Lord bless you today. Amen. 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 Amen in your life. Amen. In our churches. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our workers' training tonight. We're asking, Lord, Lord, that the word will fall on fertile ground today in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, Lord, that these words who are going to speak to us will empower us, Amen. energize us, Amen. make us fruitful, Amen. make us strong, Amen. that we'll go out in the strength of the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Do wonders in every heart, Amen. in every home, Amen. in every family, Amen. every house fellowship. Amen. Let there be great revival in your church in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. And I'm reading here from verse 14. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 14. It says afterward, he entered... He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and he upbraided them, that means he rebuked them, for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them, which had seen him after he was risen. Here we find the Lord Jesus Christ confronting his own disciples, talking to those disciples. You understand, Jesus Christ had died three days earlier, had been buried, and he rose again triumphantly. And he had appeared to some disciples. Those disciples, men and women, have reported back to the disciples, the other disciples, that Christ is risen. But they had unbelief, and they had hardness of heart. They didn't believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And he had told them over and over before he died, he was going to die, he was going to be killed, and then they thought they would rise up again. And then the word had been fulfilled, but he didn't believe. And so he rebuked them. He always rebukes of unbelief. If there's some belief in our heart, unbelief in our ministry, unbelief in the work we're doing, he doesn't want that. He rebukes that. But you see, after the rebuke, those people got the rebuke and he turned around. Things changed. Look at verse 15 now. And he said unto them, unto those same people, unbelief is gone. From your heart, unbelief is gone. Hardness of heart is gone in Jesus' name. And immediately, now look at what he said unto them. He said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. These uh, bunch of people and the people that appeared unbelieving just a few moments ago, the Lord is giving them the great commission now. And it says, Go ye into all the world, all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth, and preach this gospel, this good news, the word of grace and the word of salvation unto every creature. Then he says, See that uh, believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. As you have believed on the Lord, you need to be baptized in water. And I hope you have gone through that water baptism because it says, Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Who does not believe will be damned. Now we come to verse 17. It says, These signs shall follow them that believe. I want you to understand those words. He wasn't talking about the apostles here now because he said the apostles should go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, these are the apostles and these are the creatures they are preaching to. And as they preach to them, some of them believe. And he says, those who believe and are baptized, they will be saved. Now he says, he that believeth and is baptized, saved, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Who are they then? Those converts, the Christians, those who have now received the word of God and they have received Christ, it's not just talking about the apostles. It says, these sons shall follow them that believe. Who are the believers today? I said, who are the believers today? 
thank God I'm a believer. And he says, these I shall follow them that believe. Then he says, in my name, they who are the day, the believers, shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. They, the believers, shall take up serpents. They, the believers, if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. And it says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick. Who are the day laying their hands on the sick? The believers. And they shall recover. So then, in verse 19, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. Look at this, verse 20, and they went forth. He said, go and teach the whole nation. Go and preach the gospel unto every creature. And it says in verse 20, they went forth. They were no more unbelieving. They were no more doubting. They were no more having a um, hardness of heart. And they were no more disobedient. They obeyed the Lord. They are going to obey the Lord. They went forth and they preached. What did they preach? everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming their word with signs following and everybody said amen tonight we're looking at the word of god on fervently praying with faith for signs following fervently praying we're praying because he told them to pray and then we need to pray fervently. We need to pray with opportunity. We need to pray with faith for signs following. These signs shall follow them that believe. The last verses of this mark, which we read now, are for the church from the beginning of the church to the last days of the church on earth. There are preachers that will rather omit these verses of scripture. And they are saying that, well, these uh, verses are not that important. And actually, they don't find it in their own manuscripts. But you know, as you look at these verses, they are present in the rest of the New Testament. You find it in Matthew, you find Mark, you find uh, in Luke, you find in John, you find in the epistles. All the details here you can find in every other part of the New Testament. While the church is careless, I mean the church at large, and even sometimes our church, and we're completely Placent without these signs, false prophets are deceiving multitudes of people with counterfeit signs and lying wonders. Look at what the false prophets are doing. And Jesus said they would do that, that those false prophets would do that. And then the church itself, that is the church of the living God, the church that ought to have the, follow, the signs following after them. They are careless and they are nonchalant and they are complacent. But look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 24. It says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. The false prophets will show great signs and wonders, and it is the church that ought to be showing those signs because they say these signs shall follow them that believe. It says, In my name, they cast out devils. In my name, they speak with new tongues. In my name, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. In my name, they take up serpents and they throw them away. In my name, they lay hands on the sick and they recover. But the church is not doing what the church is called up to do. And the false prophets are taking over and it says these false prophets they will show signs not just only signs great signs they will show wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect and jesus said verse 25 behold i have told you before and if the false prophets are doing that we are rising up and we're doing what we ought to do the signs shall follow us in Jesus name look at second Corinthians chapter 11 second Corinthians chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 13 second Corinthians chapter 11 we're reading from verse 13 it says in verse 13 it says for such are false apostles they are false prophets they are false Christs 
the false uh, pastors, the false apostles, and he says the deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That is, they pretend they are apostles of Christ and they show signs and they show wonders. And it says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing uh, if his ministers, ministers of Satan, preachers for Satan, and those who have the spirit of the Antichrist, it says it's no great thing if they be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works according to their works works of deception and works of destruction they're destroying many souls and many lives and it is because the church is not waking up the church is not doing what he thought to do so these false prophets and these false apostles they're rising up and they're showing the signs false signs that the church ought to be showing it tells us in second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 9 second thessalonians chapter 2 Read him from verse 9. It says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with, with all power and signs and what kind of wonders? Lying wonders. It's a, you know, they, they tell lies and they deceive and they destroy these souls. And it says, it's with uh, the working of Satan. And it's with all the power and the signs and the lying wonders. And it says, with all deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them, God shall permit for them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, shall believe not the truth, but have pleasure in our righteousness that is the keep in our righteousness they keep their iniquity they keep their sins they are not born again they are not children of god and somehow somehow with the spirit of satan and the powers of darkness they're showing the people that there are signs there are wonders there are miracles and they're showing those miracles and the church is folding inside and the church is not having the signs and the wonders and yet the lord had given us the promise and he had said these signs shall follow them that believe it says in my name they cast out devils it's going to happen in my name it said you speak with new tongues it will happen through you it said in my name they take off some that they take off servants those serpents are there those snakes are there spiritual and physical and we throw them away they will not harm us in jesus name and it says, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And then they will lay their hands on the sick. Hands on the sick. You have hands to lay on the sick? And it shall recover in Jesus' name. Now, if these things have been promised by the Lord, why are we not having them? Why are we not seeing them? Because we are not praying for them. Because we are not expecting them. Because we are not praying and saying, Oh Lord, you promised this. And because you promised this, I ought to have. I ought to manifest. Look at what the Lord had said in Ezekiel chapter 36. Reading from verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 36. Reading from verse 37. Open your Bible. Ezekiel chapter 36. And verse 37. Thus says the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I've given the promise, yet the church, the Israel of God must pray. I've given the proclamation, I've declared the prophecy, yet the people of God must seek my face and they must pray. That's why it says, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for all these promises I've given, I will yet for all these uh, prophecies I've proclaimed, I will yet for all these pronouncements I've declared unto them, I yet be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. We're coming to Luke chapter 11. We ought to pray. We ought to pray for the fulfillment of the promises of God. We ought to pray for the demonstration of what the Lord had said will happen that the church, the people of God will believe. 
that in his name this is what they will do look at luke chapter 11 reading from verse 8 in luke chapter 11 verse 8 i say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend yet because of his importunity asking and asking until we receive asking until we can manifest asking until we demonstrate asking until those gifts are given to us and we actually possess it says yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needed and i say unto you ask and it shall be given you ask and it shall be given you you see if you count yourself out if you say well i'm not a pastor i'm not an apostle i'm not a prophet and so i don't expect that he didn't just say the apostle he said these signs shall follow them that do what them that do what that believe and if you know you're a believer you're a child of god it says ask and it shall be given you seek what will happen and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for verse 10 tell me it aloud are you part of this as sisters part of this as fellowship leaders are we part of this workers are we part of this for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh tell me it shall be opened we knock and it's going to be opened it will be opened in jesus name uh, look at what the early church did after the lord had promised them uh, they were going to see these signs going into all the world preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and his baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned and then he said the signs shall follow them that believe look at what he did acts chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 29 acts chapter 4 reading from verse 29 and now lord behold their threatenings they were praying to god because if we pray god will answer and if you pray tonight god will answer your prayer and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word that's the first scene because he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then he said lord we need boldness we need confidence we need power we need strength we need conviction and give us this kind of boldness so that we'll declare your word in every street corner we'll declare your word in every place we'll declare your word anywhere we find ourselves and we'll declare that word with all boldness and look at the rest of the prayer verse 30 by stretching forth thy hand to do what to heal, to heal. and that what yeah. signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child jesus that's exactly what christ had promised in my name they'll cast out devils in my name they'll take up serpents in my name they will and they will if they drink any deadly thing shall not hurt them in my name they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and now the people they are praying that you'll stretch forth your hand so that they'll be healing you stretch over your hand so that there'll be signs and wonders done in the name of the holy child jesus you can tell them from all these scriptures that we have read that we need to pray we need to seek the face of the lord so that this promise of the lord will be fulfilled in your life Amen. will be fulfilled in your local church Amen. will be fulfilled in a church at large in jesus name Amen. the message tonight fervently praying with faith for signs following there are three things we're looking at number one the supplication with consecration for the believers signs the believers signs that the signs for the believers these are the manifestations of the spirit of god for every believer and we need to pray that supplication we need to consecrate supplication with consecration for the believers signs point number two the source of confirmation with breakthrough signs. These are signs that give us the breakthrough. Breakthrough in church growth. Breakthrough in evangelism. Breakthrough in discipleship. Breakthrough in the growth of the church. Breakthrough signs. The source of confirmation 
with breakthrough science. Point number three, the seal, not zeal, the seal, the seal of continuation, a stamp of approval that God gives for continuation for biblical science. The seal of the continuation of biblical science. We come to point number one. Point number one, our supplication with consecration for believers' science. We're coming back to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I'm reading here from verse 17. Look at what the Lord is telling us. It says, And these things shall follow them that believe. Understand that word and, and links you up to the previous verses. If we see it at home, we're not going out. If we see it at home, we're not preaching the gospel. If we see it at home, we're not contacting anybody. If we see it at home, we're only in our local churches. We're not reaching the people that the Lord is sending us to. The signs will not follow that something follows or shadow follows you while you're moving but if you stand still if you're staying there if you're not doing anything you're not knocking at any door you're not preaching the gospel to anybody the signs will not for you it says and what that means is that you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and then those who believe and they are baptized they are they are baptized they are saved those people are the ones that will have and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall cast out devils i want you to understand when the original uh, bible was written all these punctuation marks were not there and so you can let me read this to you two ways number one look at this and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. You believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your life is transformed. You believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and a transformation has taken place in your heart and in your life. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And then because of that, they shall cast out devils. Because of that, they shall speak with new tongues. Because of that, they will take up serpents. Because of that, they will, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Because of that, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Read it the other way now, which is the way everybody has been reading it. These shines shall follow them that believe. You have believed. That means you believe the promises of God. You believe the word of God. You believe that the word of God is settled forever and ever. You believe the promises that those promises are yours. That whatsoever you bind here on earth, they're bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, they're loosed in heaven. These signs shall follow them that believe. I've given you many promises. I've given you many things. I've also accomplished on the cross of Calvary. If you believe Calvary, if you believe the atonement, if you believe my work, if you believe the promises I've given you, these promise, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, because if they ask anything in my name, I will do it. And tonight, if you ask anything in his name, he will do it. He will answer your prayer. You don't have to be waiting for you not waiting for somebody to come and pray so that this will happen. You will pray and something good will happen. Because these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. You'll not be running away when you see a demon possessed person. The word of authority will come out of your mouth. You will cast out those devils. It says they shall speak with new tongues. If it has not happened yet, it will happen. Your tongue will speak a new language. And it says they shall take up serpents. Because it will give you power over all the serpents so much on them. You'll tread on them, and they will not bother you in Jesus' name. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Poison will not kill you. I said poison will not kill you. Then it says, they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The supplication with consecration for the believer's signs. But understand, underline the words, them that believe. It doesn't matter their title. The only thing that matters is... 
them that believe. It doesn't matter whether they are new in the church or they are old in the church. The qualification is them that believe. It doesn't matter whether they are house fellowship leaders or they are uh, local church pastors or they are group pastors or region overseers or state overseers. Them that believe. Look at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse, verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, he wasn't an apostle, and Jesus said unto him, he was meeting Christ for the first time, and Jesus said unto him, this was like a new convert, and Jesus said unto him, this wasn't somebody that had read the whole Bible and had gone through everything that we have gone through.